the chair calls Cheryl Rails back. If you'd please state your name, who you represent, and if you're on for or against the bill, please. Um, thank you, Chairman, for inviting me here. Uh, my name is Cheryl Railsback. I am for House Bill 3806, and I'm here for myself and my son, Shane Detweiler. Under current law, it is very difficult for a grandparent to get a court to give us visitation. House Bill 3806 goes in the right direction of, by making it less difficult to obtain access to our grandchildren when a parent denies you contact. My son, Shane, was a law enforcement officer who was shot and killed in the line of duty July 13th of 2009. In a short period of time, my young grandchildren had to deal with their mother's hospitalization for a serious mental illness. Their father was murdered, and their maternal grandfather, with whom they were living at the time, was dying of cancer. Even with all of that happening to them, the law would not allow me to come to their aid. Shane served his country and even served in a year in Iraq, earning a Bronze Star and a Global War on Terrorism. He was the kind of person who protected others and he would have wanted us to protect his children. After, after the birth of his youngest child, my daughter-in-law was hospitalized for postpartum psychosis. Before and during this time, I was the children's primary caregiver. I not only kept them most of the time, I was responsible for taking them to the doctor's appointments, ear surgeries, Mother's Day out, church, etc. After Shane was murdered, my daughter-in-law and her parents moved in together. Her father was dying of cancer. For a short time, we were permitted to see the children on occasion. Then visitation was taken away completely as time passed. We tried to mediate a visitation schedule to no avail. In December of 2010, I hired an attorney and filed an original petition for grandparent possession or access. When the case finally went to court, the outcome was not in my favor. I could not prove that the children would be harmed from not having us in their lives. This is almost an impossible burden to prove, even after the children had been what the children had been through. But I knew the children were harmed by losing all contact with us. After the court case, we had no access to the children. My daughter-in-law's father passed away and she remarried. They soon moved four hours away. I tried to communicate with them, even sending cards on holidays and birthdays, but never got a response. This past May, I ran into my daughter-in-law and the children in Washington, D.C. for National Police Week. My daughter-in-law was, was suggested that uh, we spend time together with the children in Washington and promised that we would visit soon. Of course, when I first saw the children and they saw me, the oldest was the only one that recognized me right off. And he and I both cried and held each other. The other two children then realized we were... Um, who we were and followed suit. We visited them in July and she visited and spent the night with us twice following that. But just a week after the last visit, she decided that it would not work seeing each other and she cut it off once again. The oldest child is now 12, the middle child is nine, and the baby is eight. I miss them terribly and know that they miss me as well, especially after getting to spend time together again. Shane was the best daddy I knew, bathing and rocking them to sleep every night. He adored his family, and so did I. I not only lost my precious son, but I lost my three beautiful grandchildren as well. And it is so wrong that this can happen to my grandchildren. The okay, current Ms. law Ms. focuses... Ms. Rose, we're going to need you to conclude, please. Okay. The current law focuses too much on the adults in these situations and not enough on what is in the best interest of the children. After all... It is by the grace of God that you do not find yourselves in this situation. Thank you for letting me testify for Shane today. Thank you, ma'am. Members, any questions? All right. Thank you for staying so late.